Hello, hello, everybody. Hopefully everyone's having a great Thursday. Welcome back to another session of In The Know. Hope you guys are ready. We got another awesome 60 minute session ready to rock and roll. We are now presenting live. We are only available on computer audio. If you're having issues with hearing, please make sure those speakers are unmuted. <clears throat> oh, whoops. I tried skipping past my, uh, my intro. Hang on one sec. Rookie move. As you guys all know, I am your hostess, Leah Hartman. I'm your principal professional services consultant here at Intuit. I've been with the company for a long time, over 11 years. Currently residing in my hometown, Tucson, Arizona, where it's, it's getting pretty hot. I'm hoping the rain comes pretty soon. So thanks again for being here today. Just a couple of housekeeping items, as you guys all know, if you're familiar with, the, with our webinar here. If you have any questions regarding the content, you'll access it through the Q&A box. It should be down at the bottom of your screen. You can also find our handouts at www.intuit.me forward slash ITK handout dash JUN23. I know folks have already asked it in the Q&A. Hopefully you guys can get access to the links if you guys are looking for it through there. Agenda, pretty straightforward today. We're gonna be uh, welcoming you guys in. We'll talk a little bit about some CPE eligibility information. We'll talk about our learning objectives and then I will have my wonderful presenters come on one at a time and discuss their topics for today. At the end, we're gonna kind of finish it off with our normal accountant resources and then call it a day and let you guys get back to work. If you guys have any questions or feedback about the webinar itself, we would love to hear from you. Please use the Q&A box down below. There is no option for chat. Um, and we ask that you please only submit questions that are related to today's content. There are a ton of you and just a few of us, and we will do our very best to answer all of the questions that we possibly can in today's 60 minute session. Um, we are, um, any questions that are not gonna be answered should be available in the FAQ. And just as another friendly reminder, please do not ask us questions around technical support. We would love to help you, but we will be unable to. If you have any technical difficulties with any QuickBooks or Intuit products, please contact our accountant support at 888-333-3451. Again, contacting technical support is 888-333-3451. All right. And if you guys have been with us, you guys know the routine CPE process. In order to receive your CPE credit for one of the sessions, you must be present for a minimum of the 50 minutes to earn at least one CPE credit. You need to answer all polling questions. Please be sure to do that. Um, if all or part of the requirements are met, your CPE will be emailed to you within two weeks following the close of today's webinar. And we will be sending it to you from the accountant underscore training at intuit.com. So make sure that's added to your approved contacts with your ISP or your, um, your email service provider. <laughs> um, and that's where you'll get your certificate. And uh, as far as topics go today, we've got a lot of really great content that we're going to be covering. So first, we're going to learn all about advanced roles and permissions in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Super exciting. I'm super excited to hear about more about that. Discover updates with our QuickBooks payments services, our product there. And then we're going to find, more, uh, find out more about the discontinuation of the QuickBooks desktop point of sale. If you guys haven't heard it, you'll be the first to hear it today. We'll dive into that a little bit more towards the end. No announcements or special announcements for me today. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, hand it over to our first presenter in who's going to be talking about advanced roles and permissions in QuickBooks Online Accountant. So feel free to introduce yourself and take it away in. Awesome. Thank you, Leah. I'm going to take over the screen. Hey, hello, everyone. My name is In. Uh, I'm a product manager with the QuickBooks Online Accounting team, and I'm going to uh, present to you uh, the new advanced roles and permission in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Uh, again, my name is In. Um, I'm with the QuickBooks Online Accountant, and I've been with Intuit for the past three years. And for that, those three years, uh, I've been with the QuickBooks Online Accountant team. So accountants have a, a very special place in my heart. Um, and um, I am based in Mountain View, California. Cool. So before we jump into the topic of the today, um, I just want to do a quick poll. So are there any areas within QuickBooks Online Accountants firm's books um, that should be only accessible to company owners or primary admins? So option number one, 
expenses. So that means pay bills, manage vendors, use sales tax, etc. Um, number two is banking, connect a bank or credit card, access banking transactions. Number three is payroll. So adding employees or running payroll for employees or changing payroll schedule. And number four is reports. So viewing the report, seeing the reports, uh, the sales report, customer reports, etc. Uh, and if you have like other features that you have in mind, please select um, other. Uh, or if you don't feel like there's no feature that shouldn't be accessible, uh, that should not be accessible by non-primary admin, you can also select other as well. Yeah, feel free to add some of your, you know, um, uh, feedback into the Q&A if you guys want uh, us to know more about your options. But please make sure to answer your uh, polling question if you'd like to um, get that CPE. And so it's funny, I actually just had a question about this today earlier in <laughs> not specific like functionality, but you know, the custom user roles. So it looks like payroll's the big winner here. Hopefully mm. that's uh, that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. I'm gonna So let's jump right into the topic so that we can see like what's happening or what enhancement that we are going to bring to you. Uh, so advanced roles and permission TBOA. What we heard from accountants is that accountants, um, accountants with team, the team members, they want to be able to delegate work uh, on their firm's books and clients' books to their employees. Um, but the problem is, uh, if they delegate work to the employees, they it oftentimes means that they are also giving access to the sensitive information uh, on their firm's books or the client's books. So they want to be able to delegate work without granting employee access to uh, high-risk actions or sensitive data. So what we did is uh, we are going to launch advanced roles and permission, uh, including custom roles uh, in QuickBooks Online Accounting. Um, so I'm really excited about this because I've been um, getting lots of requests um, from lots, getting lots of co comments from the accountants that they really want this on QuickBooks Online Accounting. So custom roles and advanced roles and permission, they used to be uh, QBO advanced exclusive feature, uh, but we really wanna make sure that accountants in QBOA, they get the latest and the best improvements, uh, best features uh, on their platform. Uh, so, and this is part of the, uh, the step towards uh, achieving that goal. And so with advanced roles permission, uh, accountants will be able to manage user access and choose what users can see or do in your books in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Uh, so who can access it? Uh, all QuickBooks Online accountants in the United States will be able to access it. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, we're going to do a gradual rollout of the feature starting in July, 2023. And you can access this, this feature through the team um, menu in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Um, and for additional information, um, please refer to the link, um, the article that I uh, link here. Uh, but please note that the article is, is actually for the QuickBooks Online Advanced uh, feature, but uh, we, the, the online, uh, the roles and permission in QuickBooks Online Accounting is going to be on par with uh, Online Advanced. It's going to be uh, almost identical uh, in how you use the feature and the in terms of like the power of like what you can do. Uh, so you, you shouldn't be there shouldn't be a problem uh, using referring to that article. Cool. So let's jump into the details. Just as a recap, just to remind you what like the problem that you have to deal with in QuickBooks Online Accounting today. Um, you have limited control over uh, giving access to the firm's books. So when you're creating a team member for your firm uh, in QBOA, uh, you could only um, choose um, full or basic or custom uh, access. And even for the custom access, there's the, the control you have over the feature is very limited. There's only um, very broad uh, feature groups that you can control. Uh, you can only and you can also control you you can only control uh, view only or you give like no access to the feature at all um, and also for the client access um, you only have binary control over um, giving access to the client's books so if you want to give your employee access to the client's books you either give all access to the client's books or you give no access to the client's books so this is the problem they are trying to solve so with this improvement, um, accountants will be able to choose what users can see and do within QuickBooks Online Accountants uh, in terms of banking, sales, payroll, expenses, reports, budgets, and inventory. Again, this is the 
uh, on par with what we offer in Cookbooks Online Advanced. Uh, so this means that when you set up a new user, uh, you have a choice to either create a new role um, and what the role can access and attach that role to the user, uh, or you can even create your own um, uh, custom role, uh, or we can use um, also use the uh, predefined custom role that's, that is defined by QuickBooks. All right, so what are the predefined roles that you can use? Um, you have company admin, expense manager, inventory manager, payroll manager, sales manager, track time only, and view company reports. So for, the, for those who responded that you want to control uh, who can access the payroll uh, in your books in QBOA, uh, if you, you can select uh, which one of your members will have payroll manager access, and only those members will be able to uh, see and run payroll for, uh, for your firm. Cool. And if you want to create a new role or custom role, um, you can do this by um, selecting uh, a changing the permission level, permission definition, uh, for the role. Uh, so when you create a role, uh, you can um, select whether this force, there will be specific feature groups uh, and you will, you will be able to define whether uh, the user you're adding will have either view or create, edit, delete, or approve access to the feature that you're defining. Um, and I want to, if you like get access to advanced roles and permission, you'll notice that um, not all features, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to control, view, create, edit, delete, approve for all of the features. Uh, but I want to ensure that um, we are, the target state is to be able to control, view, create, edit, delete, approve for all of the feature groups in the future. So um, please uh, stay tuned. Oh. That actually wraps my um, presentation. Um, I want to highlight one thing. So the we're launching advanced rules and permission for your books first uh, uh, in July, and we're also going to we're going to follow up with uh, advanced rules and permission for client access uh, next year. So what that means is that once that is released, um, you are going to be able to define what your when your users, when your team members access the client's books, you're going to define what that team member can see in the client's books, uh, and it's going to be the same um, control. So you will be able to control whether the employee can see the payroll or the reports, uh, banking exp expenses in the client's books. So, Leah, should I jump into the Q&A? Or... Yes, I am so excited. I know, like, I've been in the accountant space for a long time, and I'm so excited this is finally coming. <laughs> um, you know, we've been working on custom user roles and permissions in advanced, uh, you know, for a while, and now we get to kind of mimic that in the in the yearbooks. And then next year, the clients customizations for the team members. That's amazing. So excited. Um, anyways, I just had to share my enthusiasm. But we do have a couple of questions for you if you don't if you don't mind. Um, we always get the question is just to clarify, this is only available for the US as far as these user permissions and roles that are starting to launch next month. Mm -hmm. It is going to be available in the US first, um, but we are going to roll this out to global regions as well as, as a follow up. Okay, cool. So not yet, but later. <clears throat> yes, correct. Um, and then um, I just I think from a clarification standpoint, we just want to make sure that the the custom permissions and user roles is only going to apply to the free your books in QuickBooks Online Accountant first, and it's not going to apply to how you access clients. Yes, correct. So um, access to your control for over access to your firm's books in July, and then access to the client's books uh, next year. So that's the timeline. So exciting. Um, and then there was a question. Hang on, I lost it. Give me one, give me one minute. Um, Take your time. Can there be more than one individual for each role? So similar to what we see in advance where you create a role and then you hire a new employee. So let's say it's a firm employee. Can I just assign that role to anybody? Yes, correct. Um, you, there's no limitation to like how many um, users you assign to a particular role. So you have freedom mm -hmm. over it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, does this mean I will not be able to control what my client employees can access? I'm going to say no. This is just specific to the accountant users that are accessing QuickBooks Online Accountant. 
Uh, correct. Um, was the question around the the access in the client's books? So yeah. Clarify. Okay. So again, um, the firm's books in July, but uh, control over the client access coming soon next year. Yeah. So I think of it as like we have our QuickBooks Online Accountant umbrella, right? That's the dashboard y'all log into to access clients. And in is specifically talking about the your books. If you're using the your books for your firm, we're gonna change the custom user roles and permissions for that, similar to what you see in advanced. And then um, customizing user roles for the client access, not the client employees, but the client access for the firm next year. Correct. Mm -hmm. So many different, <laughs> different levels. Um, but um, I think there was one other, um, yeah, so this doesn't grant access or change anything from a client perspective for those that keep asking about client access. This is just specifically QuickBooks Online Accountant and the dashboard that y'all log into is that free dashboard um, and, the, and the access to the yearbooks. Um, is this live now? No, not yet, but it's gonna be live in July. Um, and we are, you're going to be able to see um, before, um, uh, before August at the latest. Oh, so exciting. Next month, it's just like a week away. <laughs> so yeah, exciting. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's going to end up for, um, for questions for now. In if you have a minute to take and see if I missed any questions and answer those, um, you know, on, on, on your own, that would be amazing. Thank you again for being back on In the Know. Um, it's always a pleasure as always. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We're going to move on to our QuickBooks payments, ladies. We've got Lakey and Priya. So whenever you guys are ready, please uh, share your screen, introduce yourselves and take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Leah. Taking over the screen. Can everybody see my screen? Perfect. Awesome. Hey, everyone. This is Lakey and Priya from the QB payments team. Today, we'll be talking about um, payments dispute protection program and instant deposit. This is Lakey Lee. I have been working at Intuit for three years um, and I'm currently working on the payments team, working on instant deposit as a feature. And Priya. Hey everyone. My name is Priya Vijaya Kumar, product manager in the QuickBooks payments team as well. I've been at Intuit for 12 years and I'm based out of Mountain View. Awesome. And thanks you all for joining us today. Um, similar to E, we also hope to start with the poll to get some learnings from the audience. Uh, we're curious to learn how familiar are you with QB payments? We have been on payments team for a while and we just would love to know like how many people have been using payments and what do you um, feel about QB payments? I think the poll, the, the poll has started. Um, hopefully uh, we can all make a choice on how familiar do you feel with QB payments? You know, it's funny. I actually started in QuickBooks payments back in 2012. I supported it a long, long time ago. <laughs> uh, have you seen all the iterations throughout the journey? I have, and it's kind of like almost foreign to me now. <laughs> like I gotta, uh, I gotta get back into it and then, and, uh, and make sure I'm, I'm on top of everything. Um, but just as a friendly reminder for you folks, we are almost at one minute, which is how long we usually keep polls up. So if you haven't answered your poll question yet, please be sure to do so before we lock it out and share results. Um, it does look like we have kind of a... Uh, awesome. Yeah, across the board, it's a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, it seems like most of the, most of the um, folks here on the call are pretty familiar with QB payments. Um, and even if it's not very familiar, it's somewhat familiar or have heard of it, but have never used um, it. So it seems like QB payments is pretty popular. Uh, at least it's well known by uh, all of you. Um, but we are going to share more about our add-on features in addition to QB payments. So I'm sure that all of you have heard of QB payments, but what about instant deposit and uh, payment protection? Um, I will be first talking about instant deposit. Um, we know that a lot of small business use QB payments or a lot of you use pay, Q, QB payments um, for getting paid. However, um, the biggest VOC, um, the biggest feedback that we hear from our users is that customers really want to get paid faster. People usually have to wait for 
uh, one to five business days for the payments to arrive into their bank accounts after their clients or payer pay them. How can we accelerate this process and help our customers get paid faster? So what we have launched is, is a product called Instant Deposit. This is really a feature that helps um, our users to get paid immediately. So instead of waiting for one to five business days, um, our customers can just get paid immediately on the spot. Um, however, the problem that we have right now, and we're hoping to have all of you to help us, is um, almost half of our customers are unaware of this offering that's, that we're building, despite this offering is really um, helping to solve a problem. Um, so we just hope to promote this um, feature that we have built called Instant Deposit to all of you. Um, if customers become eligible for the feature, they can discover this within the account and setting page. Under payments, uh, you can see set up instant deposit um, as a link on the page. Um, and it is available right now. Uh, we have launched this feature four years ago. However, um, when we first launched this four years ago, um, it was um, customers could only use instant deposit on debit cards. Um, earlier this year, we have launched real-time payments, which means that merchants can now finally receive their instant deposit into their bank account. So now if you if merchants have a debit card or have a RTP eligible bank account, um, they will be able to use this instant deposit offering. We do charge 1% additional fee for any um, charge volume that goes through instant deposit reels. And then there are two ways that merchants can really use instant deposit in product. First way that we can use it is menu, uh, manually or um, ad hocly request the amount that's available to them. For example, in this deposit page on their, the sales page, um, if merchants see that, oh, they have money available, they have $1,000, $2,000, or $20 available to them on instant deposit, they can just click the, the spanner and click get it now. Uh, and then merchants will be able to get their instant deposit within five minutes into their bank account um, so that they don't have to wait for another one to five business days. That's the first way to get it. The second way that merchants can use it is, oh, I think it's so much work to always come to product and click the spanner, click this button to get my instant deposit. How can I set up a schedule to, for my instant deposit to, to, to get to me automatically? So we have provided this um, scheduling feature to merchants as well. So merchants can set up which days um, we want instant deposit. For example, I want instant deposit on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I can turn this um, schedule on. And on these days, our backend engine will run um, six times a day for instant deposit to arrive into merchant's bank account. So whenever there is fund available during the day, the fund will be deposited into merchant's bank account through the instant deposit wheels. Um, and this is all about instant deposit. If if any if merchants don't feel like using instant deposit anymore, we can just turn off the schedule and remove instant deposit from their um, QBO. Um, and this is all about QB, about instant deposit. I'm going to hand over to Priya to talk about PDP first, and then we'll come back and take some questions. Thank you, Leiki. So I'm going to be talking about another payments offering. What we heard from our customers was that about 22% of them feel that chargebacks are one of the biggest pain points when it comes to taking payments. What we did do, and before I jump into that, I will, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with what chargebacks are, but I'll also mention that chargebacks happen when the small and medium business customer, so the, your client's customers, refute a charge on their credit card, and nine out of 10 times, they will get their money back, right? So this is the customer uh, will get their money back, which means the small and medium business, they will lose the money. So they have to pay that money to their end customer. So this is, this is a very painful endeavor for our customers to go through. And what we did do is we created this new program called Payments Dispute Protection, PDP for short, right? With PDP, any chargebacks that our SMBs receive while they're enrolled in the program will be covered by QuickBooks. So if there is a $1,000 chargeback, QuickBooks will, you know, foot that bill, $1,000. But... Enrolling in PDP means that the customer pays an additional uh, fee on top of the payment processing fee. So we'll go through the fee and the coverage limits in the next slide. 
But before that, uh, again, PDP was launched in March of this year. So it's a fairly new feature and about 86% of our customers are unaware of this offering. Who is uh, who's it available to? There are eligible customers, eligible payment, QuickBooks payments customers can access PDP. It is available right now, and you can go into the accounts and settings page and the payments tab within the accounts and settings page to turn on payments dispute protection. Let's move on to the next slide, Lakey. Thank you. Um, so what we'll review next is just more details about the program and the flow within the product. So what you're seeing here is when you click on that uh, you know, turn on PDP on accounts and settings. So this is what you will see. This is what we call the sign up flow, the enrollment flow. You will get details of what is payments dispute protection. Um, with payments dispute protection, I will say that, you know, the, the merchant or the small business customers do not need to submit any documents when they receive a chargeback. Intuit takes care of it for them. Uh, the money is safe. So this protects the merchant's cash flow. And there is a cost to this, right? So the cost it, it is as low as 0.99% in addition to the payment processing fee. So the merchants are interested, they can click on set up coverage, which takes them into the screen on the top right, which is confirmation of all the uh, fees, the limits. And I'll mention quickly about the limits, which is $25,000 per year on a rolling basis. And per dispute, we cover up to $10,000. And the transaction types that are covered is its credit card and debit card only. And once we go through the sign up flow, I'll next, when we'll move on to the next one, Lakey. Thank you. All right. So, when what happens when a chargeback really happens, right? right? So, once you're enrolled in the program, if the SMB's customer files a chargeback, we will send an email to the merchant uh, letting them know that there has been a dispute that's been filed by their customer what's the amount, what was the date, and how much into it covered. And if they do want to submit any documentation, that's up to them. But at this point, because they're enrolled and actively enrolled in the program, we take care of the protection. So we, if they click on the get full details, they'll be taken to resolution center where they'll be able to see how much into it covered, right? So the amount debited from your account will be $0. The amount covered in this example is $1,000. So the entire amount was covered by QuickBooks. So we will send a notification that a dispute happened and it was covered by QuickBooks. And next, if for some reason the SMB wants to go ahead and you know turn off, they will have the ability to go back to accounts and settings at any point and turn off the payments dispute protection. I will also call out that this is only available in the US at this point. So to summarize, what we saw was we reviewed what is PDP or payments dispute protection, how to sign up, what happens when a chargeback you know, happens once you're enrolled in the program and how you can cancel. So with that, we can move on to Q&A on both instant deposit and payments dispute protection. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for all the helpful information. This is this is great. All the stuff that you guys are coming up with. I especially love the, the protection. Um, I remember chargebacks. Those are no fun. A um, couple questions I do want to ask you guys just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, <clears throat> merchant, the merchant service is only available for those that live in the US, correct? Correct. For instant deposit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then can you charge international credit cards though? Do you guys know? I don't think so. Okay. I didn't think so either. Unless just... they also use Visa and MasterCard as the um, rules, then we might be able to. Okay. Um, and then can you just remind folks the instant deposit fee? Can you just remind folks what that fee costs? Yes, of course. So we know that there is a processing fee for regular payments. Um, for instant deposit, there will be an additional 1% fee on top of the regular payments fee. Um, and this additional 1% fee is in, in terms of charge volume, uh, in terms of how much you're getting paid, and that will be another 1% additional fee. And then um, Priya, for the PDP service, what is, uh, can you kind of go into like what we're charging for that uh, currently or how can folks see if they're eligible? Yeah, so if you go into accounts and settings within uh, and the payments tab within accounts and settings on QuickBooks, the client's QuickBooks, you will be able to see a section on payments dispute protection. So if that section does show up, 
for your client, it means that they're eligible for payments dispute protection. And when they go through the sign up flow, or at least, you know, the very step or first step of the sign up flow, that's where they'll see what the fee is for that particular company. And like I mentioned, the fee starts from 0.99%. And they vary per, per company? Yeah, they vary depending on the company. Yes. Okay. And the maximum um, is 1.99%. So I'll just mention that as well. So you'll, you're only charging the fee when there's a dispute, not all charges? No, we, we charge every single transaction, right? So the uh, 0.99% or the 1.99% is on every single transaction. But when a chargeback does come after that, we, we just cover the chargeback. So it's you just per cover. transaction. Yeah. That's actually not bad. Um, considering, you know, if you're making bit, pretty big volume payments, uh, you know, through, through QuickBooks payments, that could be really super helpful. Um, and I, I apologize for flip-flopping back and forth for looking for questions, but uh, back to instant deposits. Um, is the instant deposit available for accountants or for businesses as well, or can both folks click the get instant deposit? Um, we are, this is available on the company level. So mm -hmm. regardless you, if you are a content level, a content accounting firm or a regular non-accounting firm, uh, on the company level, customers will be able to have access to instant deposit. Um, and I believe that accountants should not have access to, to get the fund for them, for their clients. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, is there a max, I'm, I'm assuming this is instant deposit. Is there a max deposit amount? Great question. So for each merchant, we do have a daily limit. And this daily limit um, is for internal use. And, and this is a risk-based daily limit. So, uh, merchants can have up to um, 50K um, dollar of daily limits. And once merchants get to, when, get to that daily limit for that day, merchants will not be able to get uh, more instant deposit draws. And this daily limit changes based on merchants' um, profile. Um, if we see everything's going well for the merchants, we might have better uh, or larger daily limit, or it will be a smaller amount of daily limit. Perfect. Um, I'm checking to see if there's any other questions we can answer live. Um, if, okay, I don't know what this one applies to. It might be for both of you guys. If the account is canceled, so like if merchant services is canceled, can they reinstate the program if they choose to come back? Do you guys know? Yes, they'll be able to reinstate payments dispute protection and instant deposit when they come back. Uh, they just need to go back through the signup flow uh, when they reinstate the, pro, uh, you know, the account, but uh, it is definitely possible. Perfect. And I do believe you guys had links to your fees and stuff like that um, on your guys' slides. So folks, if you have additional questions around fees, please be sure to check out the handout. The articles will be linked um, on that first page in this section. So ladies, thank you so much for all of your time. You guys have been so helpful and awesome. I'm excited to, to see all the great things that we're continuing to, to build out. So um, if you guys have an opportunity to hang out in the background for a few minutes and answer some questions I miss, that'd be amazing. Thanks again. Sure, thanks. All right, uh, everybody's been waiting for, we got QuickBooks desktop point of sale discontinuation. I do believe I've got my good friend Martina and Brian from Shopify, who's gonna be taking us onto our next and final session section. Great, thank you, Leah. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Martina Lutterbuck and I am a product manager with QuickBooks Desktop Point of Sale located in San Francisco, California. And I have with me today, Brian Edwards, who is a product specialist from Shopify and he is located in Toronto, Canada. So happy to have everybody with us today. As many of you know, um, Intuit has made the decision to discontinue QuickBooks point of sale as of October 3rd, 2023. There will be no future versions of the software after this date. And in addition to the software being discontinued, there are a series of connected services 
that are listed on the slide that are also being discontinued on October 3rd. So based on that, I wanted to open up a poll and we had a question for the audience today. Um, as you think about your customer base, you know, regarding their transition um, to a new point of sale system, we're trying to get a gauge of what stage your pause clients are in. So the option answers are most of my clients have already selected a new point of sale system. Most of my clients are actively exploring options for a new POS system. Most of my clients have just started to research a new POS system. Most of my clients have not started researching a new POS system yet. Or if this isn't applicable to your client base, then you can select the last answer not applicable. I'd be curious so to know why not applicable. If you guys care to share, please feel free to, to share your feedback with us in the Slack channel. Sorry for the, the error of the poll coming up and disappearing. Um, we were just a, a smidge early, so sorry about that. No worries, no worries at all. We are coming around our one minute time for poll. Please be sure to answer that question if you'd like to get your CPE. And um, we'll get that closed out and share the results with you in just a second. So aside from the not applicable, it does look like a majority of folks did say most of my clients already have selected a new POS system. So it should be good. Okay. And then we looks like we've got uh, also a chunk of customers that are about 11% of the customers that are in the process, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, all right. So thank you. And then moving on to the next slide. So regarding the QuickBooks point of sale end of life, uh, there were a few things that we heard from customers. So one of the things that we heard was help me find a new modern POS system. Um, so to answer this, we teamed up with Shopify POS to provide the modern integrated retail solution that allows customers to be able to sell in multiple channels, but manage everything in one place. We also heard from customers, help me keep as much of my current processes or tools in place. So what we did is we collaborated with Shopify to build a custom solution that integrates with QuickBooks desktop accounting software. And lastly, customers asked us to provide a smooth migration path to move their data from QuickBooks point of sale. So we worked with Shopify to build the free migration tool and develop premium onboarding to support that. And the migration path that has been developed is also supported by Shopify's 24-7 support. So we just touched briefly on the Shopify POS and how we collaborated with them um, across the migration and the integration. And what I would like to do now is turn it over to Brian Edwards from Shopify, who is going to demo the migration and integration that has been built. Hey everyone, thanks for having me, excited to be here. So to continue on what Martina mentioned about Shopify, I thought I would give a quick overview because we do get these questions fairly regularly. So Shopify is a cloud-based retail solution, meaning that merchants can use Shopify from anywhere and on multiple devices simultaneously. So whether that's on a computer at home, on a laptop or a mobile device, really wherever they have a data connection or an internet connection. Shopify also supports up to a thousand inventory locations now, unlimited devices per location per retail store and unlimited retail staff in those stores. The POS app itself, so you can see on the screenshot here, is a separate sales device, a separate app that's used in the store or at pop-up events. It is mobile-based, meaning that the app will work on Android devices, iPads and iPhones. Um, Shopify also provides a fully integrated online store, meaning that if a merchant has an existing online store with Shopify, all of their orders, products, inventory, customers, and everything will stay in sync. This enables merchants to seamlessly offer things like local pickup, a loyalty program, and in-store returns. This also makes it super easy for new merchants who may not sell online yet and want to open up an online store to get started because the majority of their data and information will be in Shopify. So setting up the website becomes really easy. 
Now, Shopify is more so known for e-commerce. That's true. It's how we got our start. But more than one in 10 Shopify e-commerce merchants also benefit from using Shopify point of sale. And again, although we're known primarily for supporting entrepreneurs and small to medium sized businesses, we also work with some larger merchants such as Herschel Supply, New Era, and Kitten Ace. Now we're also offering a special promotion for merchants who are switching from QuickBooks point of sale to Shopify, which includes 50% off point of sale and e-commerce plan, as well as 50% off some selected hardware. And if you haven't seen that yet, we can follow up with some more information. So as Martina mentioned, as part of the QuickBooks POS end of life, we built a connector app for Shopify that migrates data from QuickBooks point of sale to Shopify and integrates Shopify with QuickBooks desktop accounting software. So in this section, we'll talk about what's being migrated from QuickBooks point of sale to Shopify, how to export your files and how to actually do the migration. Then we'll look at what's being integrated between Shopify and QuickBooks desktop and how we set up the integration. In the interest of time, I'm gonna go through these steps fairly quickly, but if you're interested to learn more and have detailed step-by-step -step instructions, all of these topics are available in the Shopify help docs. Okay, so what is being migrated over to Shopify? Customer information, including name, address, contact info, including email and phone, notes, and all of that. Products and inventory, including barcodes, cost prices, taxation, as well as mapping inventory to the separate locations, if a merchant has multiple locations. And lastly, vendor information. Um, before doing the migration, this is actually a good opportunity for merchants to perform any data cleanup before migrating. A couple reminders uh, that are really important before we begin migration, we need to ensure that we're on QuickBooks POS V19 R11 and that you're using QuickBooks desktop accounting software 2021, 2022, or 2023, uh, or QuickBooks desktop enterprise 21.0, 22.0, and 23.0. Okay, so the first step of this process will be getting our data out of QuickBooks point of sale. Um, merchants will export three separate data file. So they'll need to perform this process three times. They'll get one file for customer information, one file for inventory information, and then a final file for vendor information. Now we'll lock, uh, log into the Shopify account, we'll switch over to Shopify, and we'll use the connector app that we have built. The uh, QuickBooks desktop connector app comes pre-installed for merchants, for these QuickBooks point of sale merchants, who sign up for Shopify through the provided link. In this section, we'll upload the inventory file, the customer file, and the vendor file in the appropriate sections. The time for migration will depend on the size of these files and how much information you're bringing over to Shopify. It could be anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours if you have a small product catalog or a really, really big product catalog. And once the data migration is complete, it will look something like this. So you will see uh, your customers in the customer section and you can double check this to make sure that everything has imported correctly. Um, one thing to note is actually that we apply a tag to each product and each customer so that merchants can identify the items that were brought over through the migration versus items that they may have uh, created in an existing Shopify account or one that they will create in the future. So that's a nice handy feature. And here's a look at the completed product import as well. And the same is true for all of the imported products with the tag that we've applied. All right, so now that we've migrated our data from QuickBooks point of sale into Shopify, what is being integrated between Shopify and QuickBooks desktop? So first off is all orders from all sales channels. So if a merchant is using Shopify point of sale in the retail store, uh, maybe they have an online store or they're selling through other channels through Shopify, like Facebook or Instagram or eBay or those types of things. Orders that are unpaid or unfulfilled are syncing over as well. 
Customer information is going to continue to sync. So all of that contact information, notes, tax exemptions, tax exemption status, and all of those things. And then purchase orders, receiving vouchers, vendor information, and adjustment memos on the inventory side of things are all syncing with QuickBooks Desktop as well. So to, to, to set up the integration, uh, there are essentially two main steps. First, within QuickBooks Desktop, and then second, back within the connector app to map the accounts. So let's take a quick look at that. Now, these screenshots are of the connector app itself within Shopify. But as you can see, there are some detailed step-by-step -step instructions here and screenshots of um, QuickBooks Desktop software to help merchants walk through and set that up. Uh, Second step is to find the connector app within QuickBooks Desktop and generate the app token. This is also a good time to mention that it's really helpful to do the migration and integration process on the same computer as it makes going back and forth and finding the apps um, a lot easier. Okay, so the second half, back within the connector app, back within Shopify, we're going to map our accounts. So you can see here in the account mapping section, you'll select the QuickBooks accounts that map with the Shopify category. So for example, COGS account category to match with cost of goods sold field. Lastly, in the sync section down at the bottom, we get to choose our sync mode, whether that is summary or detailed sync, each for customers, inventory, and vendors. And you may already know this, but the summary mode essentially sends summarized data to QuickBooks Desktop. Um, if a merchant is using QuickBooks Desktop Pro or Premier version, and they have more than 14,500 rows of combined data, then they need to select the summary mode. Otherwise, they can choose detailed mode, which sends exact names and descriptions over from Shopify to Desktop. OK, so we've done the migration. We've set up the integration. Now we're just ongoing and we're running smoothly. A couple things to note, keep the QuickBooks Desktop Connector app installed in the Shopify admin after the integration is done. If you delete it, the integration will stop. The data sync from Shopify to QuickBooks will run approximately every five minutes. And important to note that the data sync is one way from Shopify to QuickBooks Desktop. So if a merchant is um, creating new customers or doing certain things within desktop, just note that that information won't flow back over into Shopify. So it is one way. Okay, and that's the end of my section and we'll start the Q&A. Brian, thank you so much for that helpful information. And I just wanna make sure we are all on the same page. QuickBooks desktop point of sale is going to go away. We're not gonna be building out any new versions of that. And so we are offering Shopify with this free integration as a solution to that, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, is there um, like a website we can go to, like a Shopify website, if we have any additional questions about other integrations, can we go to like Shopify's website or anything like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, in our Shopify help box, we have uh, a lot of detailed information on this connector app in particular, and a lot more steps than uh, I was able to go through today. So I'll definitely share that out and, and we can have a look through all that information. There's okay. also a link, Leah, on the our approach slide <clears throat> that that links them to the website. Perfect. Yeah. So if anybody has any specific questions outside of this functionality, I would say go check that out. Um, there was a question about functionality here on Shopify POS, but I'm trying to find it. <laughs> um, where did it go? It was here. It was something around being able to use multiple COGS accounts for one product. Something like that. Good. Yes. Good, good question. Um, right now, all products will sync to one COGS account in QuickBooks Desktop Accounting. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
is there support from Shopify? So I'm assuming that's going to kind of tie back to the the um, first few slides that you guys had shared, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So Shopify offers 24 seven support, but we've actually built out a specific dedicated team of support specialists who are working with merchants who are switching from QuickBooks point of sale over to Shopify. Um, and somebody had asked, is there a way to get certified in Shopify? Oh, good, good question. Uh, I'm wondering if they're referring to uh, like a, a partner certification of, of some sort. So I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, we actually offer a few different certification courses, um, one for partners, Shopify partners in particular. I don't think we have that information included in the in the slides like Martina had mentioned, but we can um, provide that after as well if, if anyone's interested in taking a look. Awesome. And then I think my final question for you guys is, is can you remind us, did we have an official date of when point of sale ends? So the discontinuation date is October 3rd, 2023. And that is for the software and uh, connected services. So customers can continue to use the software after October 3rd, but there will be no more updates or security patches or improvements to the point of sale software. Gotcha. That makes total sense. Thank you guys so much for spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, I think that's going to actually wrap us up for today. Um, if you guys have an opportunity to see some questions within the last few minutes to answer outside, again, thank you for those on the background that were answering questions while we were working. We appreciate you too. Um, and thanks to the audience for spending time with me today. I just want to kind of close out today's webinar with our additional resources. If you guys have more uh, questions around QuickBooks Online Accountant, how to get certified, all that good stuff, we have training and webinars available for you at qbtraininghevents.com. If you would like to read more up on our Firm of the Future blog, our firmofthefuture.com site has a plethora of information on monthly updates just for accountants, as well as blogs that are written by folks like you as well. And then if you guys are interested or wanting to know more about the feedback into action, we kind of talked about this, um, gosh, I want to say earlier this year now, I feel like it was yesterday, but it's been a minute, um, a regular series of articles where we're going to be share, sharing relevant product updates. And of course, your lovely in the know webinar as well. Um, we'll be sharing those updates with you too. So thank you guys again. Final Final comment, if you guys would like to access the handout into it, uh, www.intuit.me forward slash ITK handout dash JUN23. Thank you all. We'll see you next month and have a great rest of your week.